Gentlemen, Alex, it's good. You're back. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? I think we're all great. I think we're doing very good. Daniel, how are you? Good. Uh, All three of us are back. It's just just a link assemble. It's like one day we're together, the other day we're not. We're like an unhealthy relationship. Uh, I don't know why that was the first thing I thought of, but (laughs) it's like you ever had that friend in high school where it was like they're on and off again with their significant. I knew one like that. His name was mm-hmm. Adam, funny enough. Adam F. I won't say his last was, name, but a fellow was, Adam F. Actually. Was it you? It was not me. No, because I wish. Also, oh, okay. you're yeah, also an Adam F. You're that. also no, an no, Adam it F. was it was a different Adam F that funny <laughs> enough, I I had known him since kindergarten. Isn't oh, it wow. one of those things where like it was a different Adam? Like Anakin and Darth Vader. No, he was always pretty much the same personality. Okay, to be okay. Yeah, he, he deadly consistent throughout his life. I haven't spoken to him in years, but yeah. In fact, what's really annoying is he was taller than me, right? So because we went to the same schools, three straight things, right? Uh, because he was tall, he's like six two, right? And he'd be, this bothered me a lot when I was in elementary school because I was a kid. He'd be tall Adam and I'd be little Adam. Aww. And being called little Adam for eight years really gets to you. Like Joe Podolsky yeah. and Joe Thornton. It was always that the thing, little Joe and Jump, Big Joe. Yeah, Jumbo Joe and uh, little Joe. Little Joe. Yeah. Sure. Pass to the point by Big Joe. Tip scores, <laughs> and it's little Joe in front, and the crowd goes wild, and they've tied it up, and the biggest Golden Knights are seething right now. Anyway, um, a bit of a serious note. We're gonna get right into it here. We have a lot to talk about today. Uh, I'll just quickly run through what's on the docket. Uh, we will be reviewing the last two episodes of Kenobi. I feel like we're going to spend a lot more time on the last episode that we'll finish the show with that. We're going to talk about the award show. I forgot it was on. I didn't watch it. I won't lie. Kind of forgot about it. Uh, head coaching news. Cause there's been three, maybe four sort of other things going on here. We're going to talk about game three of the cup final, obviously, but to open the show, uh, a warning to start because we are going to be talking about a case that has reference to sexual violence. Uh, If you missed it, of course, this is going to be the latest in regards to the Hockey Canada and CHL. Remember that for later, by the way. And the CHL settlement with an unnamed woman who alleges that she was sexually assaulted by eight CHL players, including members of the 1718 Canadian World Junior Team. Uh, This is in regards a few days ago, the Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage had a hearing with members of Hockey Canada about their handling of this case. I'm going to talk for a bit here because I want to set this all up. Um, because it's very important. I got a lot of this information from Rick Westhead, Katie Strang, and Emily Sad- uh, Sattler of Sports, and, and Dan Robson, of course. And there is a Katie Strang, Dan Robson uh, article. I'm going to go Andy, in a second. Here. Andy and Mendez. Andy and Mendez. Yes. Oh, it's a, a th- what a surprise. Whenever they come together. Um, okay. I see. Not that article. It's an. It's another one that came oh, okay. out. Okay. Oh. Another one. I forgot about that one. Um, I'm going to admit, but this is another one pertaining to the Team Canada stuff. But that is a very important one that we're going to get to maybe next episode, but I completely forgot about it. Um, okay. Now, for some reference here, I just I want to make sure everyone knows some of the people that are being questioned during this hearing. First off, we have Hockey Canada's President Scott Smith, the outgoing CEO Tom Rennie, who is actually a former assistant coach in Detroit. Um, yeah, he's outgoing. I believe he's planning on retiring soon. Uh, Hockey Canada's lawyer, Andrew Winton, was in attendance to provide legal advice to the witnesses. Dave Andrews, who is the chair of Hockey Canada's Board of Governors. Now, just to give you guys some idea of how all of this went and how um, sort of the government have taken this. First off, they were looking into matters about if this, if this settlement was paid off with government money, but I think a lot more came out of it. Um, we're going to get to that exact point in a second. But first off, Um, From this, the federal government has actually started, they're freezing Hockey Canada's funding. And this is from an Emily Sadler article on Sportsnet. Quote, 6% of Hockey Canada's annual budget amounting to about $7.8 million comes through the government funding every year. The House of Commons, this is actually very new. Uh, The House of Commons has approved a motion via unanimous consent to ask for independent investigation into how Hockey Canada managed sexual assault allegations in June 2018. Uh, The scope of the probe is to figure out if this was an isolated event or there were shortcomings with the way Hockey Canada handled complaints of sexual assault, sexual harassment, and other types of misconduct. Because revealed in all of this, this is not the only claim in the past few years Hockey Canada has received. Okay, I'm just going to quickly read some stuff from this Katie Strang, Dan, um, Dan Robson thing, and then we can get into the discussion. 
Sorry, I'm ranting a lot here, but this is all very important. I'm not going to read the whole article for obvious reasons. Go read Katie Strang's stuff and Dan Robson. They're fantastic. Uh, and obviously, I don't want to read an entire thing on the show because it would be boring. Uh, during the hearing, Hockey Canada revealed that it paid the settlement on behalf of all defendants, including itself, the CHL, and all eight John Doe defendants, despite not knowing the identity of those involved. The organization says none of the public funding it received were used in the settlement. Hockey Canada says that the organization still does not know the identities are still, I'm going to repeat this, says that the organization still does not know the identities of the players alleging involved in this attack. But that is, um, sorry, but that it learned about the incidents uh, the day after the golf tournament. At the time, Hockey Canada said it launched its own investigation with a third party law firm. Hockey Canada recommended, recommended that all players participate in the investigation. A dozen or more players did cooperate, but several did not, Smith said. So first off, we can make a pause here and discuss this first sort of point. Also, didn't he say he wasn't sure how many, wasn't that the start? At was one point, he, he said sure. around six, and then it was clarified later. Okay. But this is the worst part, Alex, is oh, if you more. listen... They did not sound confident about this. They did not sound prepared. But this is the first point I think we should sort of tackle on this whole thing, <laughs> that they did not mandate all players. And there, were, I think, was it 15 or 16 members were at this sort of gala event in London? And they were put on blast for this, rightfully so. And we're, we're going to get into those more later. But to start here, how in the world did you not mandate everyone there to participate because if not you simply say no 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 you can't play just to clarify the investigation at the time or the invest the current investigation because um, there's a couple current investigations right the nhl is doing one um i assume I, hockey canada had just done one and then i fig- believe this might be their original report that okay. they are still waiting for. By the way, we'll get to that later, but they're still waiting for it. I believe this is to do with the original report, which I believe I believe included London police, who st- I, either they, they, they don't know. How in the world, all these years later, have you not found it out? And how did you not mandate it at the... How do you... Uh, just how? Yeah, no, I. <laughs> okay, so this is it, just all over this place was uh, this thing. This thing was all over the place. I, I I was reading clips and pieces. I'm like, this is just this couldn't have gone worse. Could it have? No. Could it like I just thought this was so messy. And the fact that you're right, they didn't mandate them to participate in the investigation. I want to know why, what, like, what was the, what was the reasoning for, for you saying, do you just not care? I, that, I, that's, I guess, a reason. Is it legitimate? No, but I, I'd, I'd rather know that. Um, you know, I, I just, it was very disappointing, I, I think. And it's obvious, sorry, like that's the obvious here is that it's disappointing. I think it's extremely dumb that they weren't mandated to do this. Like we're talking about, an extremely serious, serious thing here. And, and I think you're like, you're right. If you're, this isn't a mistake, like, you know, and, and I hadn't seen it much this time around, but I also haven't been on hockey Twitter as much. So you guys tell me if this is uh, prominent, but you know, when we talked about Mayu and we talked about the stuff before, you know, the set, some of the sentiment, some of it was, you know, he's a kid. It's a mistake, blah, 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 blah. This is so beyond everything we've seen that we've seen, really. You know, I, I know the article uh, in the Men- Ian Mendez, Dan Robson, Katie Strang article obviously mentioned uh, Reed Boucher, too. I, I don't remember if you guys, I don't know. If- yeah. Who just got extended in Russia. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So we've seen that. Like, I just feel like. Be- it's just so much, it's so big. And I don't want to, I'm not trying to downplay that case, but this is so big. How are you not doing that? 
So just for anyone who may not remember, Mayu obviously was fine for sharing pictures of him and the girl having consensual sex, but she did not consent to the pictures being taken. And then he shared it with his teammates, which is... And then Reed, Reed Boucher, not Tyler, because there's a few Boucher's other. Reed Boucher was the one who I believe was charged with a sexual assault with would have been his... What, what's the term? Oh, Billet I can't remember. Sister. Billet's sister. Um and, and the, the details about that were disgusting. And I remember that. But that, that's you go back to sort of the thing of um, about the age. So this is the world junior team. That's U20, right? Mm-hmm, so yeah. they are. And obviously, 16-year-olds are never really part of the team. So, But even, even so, we have ages 16 to 19 at this tournament. I, I don't think you need to teach someone that. Or sorry, let me rephrase this. Yes, I don't yeah. think it takes... A, someone with a PhD to tell you what the crime being accused here. It doesn't matter how old you are. Like it, it does. If you are the one committing the crime, you do not need at 16. Who in the world thinks what they allegedly did committing such an act is based like, I, like I, it's evil. It's evil. Is like forget the age. I knew that crap not to do it at sixteen, to freaking ninety. I knew when I was as young as I can remember. It's one of like the ugliest things you would ever do to someone. So, like, and I know you're not saying this, but to the people saying no. like young man, they, sorry, let's. I don't think people people said that mainly about Logan. May the other saying, ones, other stuff I, too. I don't think many people are defending this, which thank God for it. No. And I saw a clip from the, you know, you brought up education and I, 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 I had the clip, but the tweet got deleted. Uh, the, who had, the author deleted the tweet and it was an MP, a conservative MP. I remember that specifically. I don't remember his name mm-hmm. talking about, you know, hockey Canada, whoever was there, the, the people you mentioned earlier were, you know, talking about how education and things like that. And like spot on exactly what you said, like, what is how, why do you have to like why do you have to teach that right like it's it's morality. It's, it's, it's mind boggling that it needs that in in particular why that needs to be taught Here, here's the thing too and and people were kind of questioning you know uh, why in this scenario would you settle on this? And Elliot Freeman has said, apparently he's spoken to some people on the legal side of things. And apparently a big problem is there was underage drinking at this event. Now, obviously this is in London, Ontario, uh, the age is 18. So there would be members around there depending on their age. And apparently the sort of thing thrown to them was you would have to settle. The legal, legal age expert. is 19. Yes. 19. No, sorry, sorry. I'm thinking sorry. of Quebec. Sorry. Yes, I have Quebec yes. on the mind. Quebec 18, Ontario 19. Uh-huh. So that would even opens the gap even more to those the players being there. Um, um, on, on top, I had something else in my mind, but it, it just, it slipped. Um, and, and sorry, like, because yeah, I ahead. think a lot of what we're talking about here is accountability, right? Yes. And the same NP actually mentioned this too. I, I had remembered remembering parts of this clip. It's like, what are we like? Cool. You know what? I don't even want to give them props for it but they did essentially take responsibility for it which is like congratulations like i don't know do you want the award? going down i get no it what. you were going down no matter what i feel like going through that press conference and i did not watch the entire thing i saw clips here or there i read the articles and, and so on and so on i felt a lack of accountability so I remember what I was going to say, and to the thing of like, even if you can blame it on being intoxicated, that's still, I've been drunk before. Again, even in that wildest state, never before has something like that been like. It's Sorry, a thing I meant, on I even meant ho- like you are responsible for your own actions. And again, reflects on Hockey Canada for having to be responsible for these players at that time. Mm-hmm. And their line about, oh, we're borrowing players. So we can celebrate with them when you're winning tournaments and you get your gold medals. But mm. when something serious like this happens, you're like, oh, I mean, you know, you know, this guy belongs to that AO, that CHL team. We can't be, shut up, shut up. 
Um, and and sorry, I'm sure Daniel, the, the C. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Daniel. No, it's okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. Like, everything you guys were saying were really interesting. I was just listening in to everything. And it is true that what's been going on, that in what you've mentioned, Alex, in terms of lack of accountability, for me, it was just super lazy because I feel that they're just going through the motions with this, that the facts have been presented, that investigation went like this. And it, it just for me typical nhl and i know like this is kind of like a bigger thing but it was something i had on the mind the entire time i was reading the article and per- and waiting for this episode is this in my opinion should be viewed as 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 a crossroads and i i hope it does viewed as something that an example between you know these junior players and the pro levels of just another example of hockey culture and what's going on with it because for me the real juniors and you know i've been a huge fan of the real juniors for so long Mm -hmm. and for you're the world juniors expert on this podcast thank you um and the way i've just seen with hockey canada is this was like one piece that was so prompted up in a way to show that this is all the good things about it and in a way it's like it's it was prompted up that it was from all of the bad things that have been going on with hockey. But for me, I think that this case has really kind of shown that like, listen, you know, we, we talk about the problems that are going on in the NHL, but there's a lot of the things along the line that we have to really worry about. And I hope that this is just a reminder now of the tip of the iceberg of what's going on in hockey. And I know I've referenced it so many times when I spoke to Tyler Griffin from our program that, He's a guy who's been saying this for so long that, hey, like, yeah, we talk at the higher, the highest level sometimes of what's going on in the game, but let's not forget what's going on in the lower levels. And I really do hope that this case kind of does show that, that, you know, even, even when I think, you know, not us, but sometimes when you look at the, the national pride, you look at, you know, the world junior program, you look at what's going on with Hockey Canada. This is just this is just another example of like you can't just you can't cherry pick the good parts of things. You have to fix the system. Oh, a, th- a thousand percent. And you know, I I have this I have this Katie Strang tweet here about um and from Anthony Housefather about not doing more to discern the players involved, right? Mm-hmm. And talks about transparency and stuff and stuff like that. You know, I find it always super, super interesting when we talk about you know, going to, you know, when you're called up to a national team and it's not just uh, in hockey. I think it's, it's like this in other sports and how proud you're supposed to be and how, you know, it, it just, everyone's going to be happy and, you know, it's super pleasing but th- I feel to me, it just loses its meaning when you don't hold people accountable. Cool. Super cool that you're good at hockey. But if it's so meaningful to wear the Team Canada sweater, mm-hmm. it, it should mean something like to those people. I don't know. I, I, I think... Th- I don't know what I'm trying to get at here. I'm so sorry, but I just, again, it's cherry picking. Like you're, you're saying it's important. You know, you gotta be a model citizen and, you know, we always go back to the silly little things that hockey coaches like to say, okay, so where's the consistency here? Well, Alex, you making this point is actually a perfect transition to, to the next block of this thing. I just want to read here. Uh, first off, some members of the committee took aim at Hockey Canada's code of conduct, which does not require that players participate in such investigations. Conservative MP Kevin Wow, uh, W-A-U-G-H, WAG, uh, pushed Smith on accountability, stating the organization should have compelled players to participate. And there was a quote uh, where basically Scott Smith said the organization is, quote, probably behind on education initiatives. And this what does next- that mean? Oh, hold on, Alex. The best part isn't even done yet. This is a part that I think stopped a lot of people, myself included. He cites the pandemic as the cause because sexual assault didn't exist before COVID, apparently. 
That's and so this event was not sorry. Ha- sorry, this go event, ahead, Daniel. Yeah. No, and, and this event clearly happened before the pandemic. That's the it, oh my god, literally it happened in 2018. It well, literally happened two years before COVID. That is the laziest excuse. And he should be embarrassed that he's he said that in front of the the in front of MPs. There were people watching that live on their computers. That is so embarrassing how you you say that you blame the pandemic. The odd the honestly, the audacity, like that's that pisses me off considering the crap that went on during the pandemic. That you have the audacity to say it's the la- it was because of the pandemic. You have the lack of education, blah, blah, blah. What does education have to do with this though? Like what you know, they talked about education. How was that relevant in this case? Where's your respect for the victim? The pandemic. Was the pandemic, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Imagine if you're that, that uh, if, if you're her and you, you're seeing this come about. So what? This isn't going to happen again now because the pandemic's up? Oh, now you're going to change it? May I remind everyone, when, when again did the Kyle Beat stuff happen? 2011. 2011. By the way, I love how quickly the Jenner and Block report got done and how Canada still don't have their thing. But just imagine you're, you're her reading this and you're saying the COVID got in the way. COVID. COVID got in the way of what? This incident of was five what? years What? So just continuing. Hockey Canada is in talks with their partners as to whether it can change its code of conduct to require players to take part in future investigations. Who are their that? partners? Does it say, Warriors, that has maybe? anyone has anyone asked the question of who Hockey Canada partners are? I'd be very uh, curious to know. As I would too. Uh, uh, during the hearing, Smith also revealed that Hockey Canada has dealt with one to two sexual assault allegations per year the past five or six years. So let's just get into that. So five years ago is 2017. So this would have been, let's just say we're extending it a bit. That is before this alleged incident, right? Okay, so let's just throw your stupid pandemic thing out the window for a second. Just ignoring everything there. If you've had these incidents, if there's a history of it, why in the world after the first one, the second one, would you not make a change? You know, I love that. I wonder what it's, and I agree with you, and I I don't mean to cut you off, but and I don't mean to cut Daniel off either because I I feel really bad. But my last point... You know, what was it before that? Why is no one asking what the numbers are? And maybe they are and they don't have answers. And I don't believe that they don't have answers, but that's fine. What was it like before 2017? Because it's cool. I mean, not that one to two per year is acceptable, but what was it before that? Who knows if people were coming for it then? Who knows? I don't know exactly how long like Smith's been around for but uh, that's that doesn't mean he doesn't have the numbers though yeah exactly that has to be there when he said that he said one or two like annually so he didn't have the numbers ready he definitely didn't which is beyond me but um hockey canada said it has not received the complete report from its third party firm and said they have been advised not to make any findings from that investigation public describing it uh describing the info as quote privileged um now Here's something that's kind of weird to that is, and it's a bit con- contrary here. So I believe there was, I think Rick West had tweeted out that sports minister Pascal St. Ange, I could be saying it wrong, sorry, testifies that two days before our story was published, and I think he means the article he released on May 26th, um, Revealing allegations in this case, Hockey Canada CEO Tom Rennie called and told her the case had been settled and there was an NDA non-disclosure agreement. Mm -hmm. Also, Tom Rennie is asked if the eight players allegedly involved should be known and identified. Quote, we are certainly paying very close attention to the young woman and her wishes. So all of that language involved there, privilege stuff, the disclosure agreement, agreement, we're listening to the, the young woman, as they put it. That's all very confusing to me. That's all very confusing to me. You know what I mean? Like, what does all of that mean? 
So That's I'm a, just gonna yeah. finish. I'm just gonna finish this one part in the, the string article, and there's a few more things I want to touch on. Okay. Uh, Runny, who has served as Hockey Canada CEO since 2014, acknowledged that the organization's supervision of players was insu- uh, insufficient. The line was blurred there, and we fell short. Obviously, they didn't feel it was responsible to have someone keeping a close uh, line on where eight players mysteriously went. And, and that's fine. And again, my next question would be, what have you done to address that? You know, uh, you know what I felt like I got a lot of from this press conference and which are not press conference, this hearing, which is essentially what we should expect is we got a whole lot of answers, but not a whole lot of solutions. Keep going. Sorry. Uh, no worries. So that's from these are just the last few things I want to put out. Oh, anyway, no, the, the, the report, yeah, they still don't have it. Uh, push them to get it to you. Uh, hurry up. Um, I, um, obviously, we know the NHL are making the investigation, at least on the surface. They say they're going to make it public because there's a good chance there could be now NHLers. Um, hold on a minute. Two more things. First off, Hockey Canada apparently did not rely on insurance to pay the settlement but rather they liquidated a portion of its investments to pay. That's what Scott Smith said. Um, I, t- I wonder if that's just, because I think everything starting with the government here was what they wanted to find that out. And apparently I think they're going to, um, there was another piece, I, I, I can't remember, but they're going to do something about double checking that money. No offense, I don't, I don't care if insurance or the government paid for it, that, but I, I think this is their own thing to make sure their money didn't go into it, or that's my speculation. Our money. Our money, yeah, fair our enough. Money. Fair enough. <laughs> Still, I, I, right now, I don't, I don't give a crap who care. Like, I, I, I want justice. To be honest with you. Last thing here, that this is something I wanted to to mention myself. So this was settled by Hockey Canada, right, for themselves, and the CHL. So my question here is, why are the CHL so quiet right now, considering they were their players, even if. They were under the supervision of the CA, well, the CHL, sorry, the, of, of Hockey Canada, but Hockey Canada are saying, oh, we just borrowed them. So why are we not throwing some blame to the CHL right now? Because they are just as responsible for those players. Or depending on if there were now, I believe, no, I'm not going to speculate just in case, but if there were also players involved in this team who were then sent and loaned by their NHL teams, because that, that sometimes happens, where is their responsibility in this? I think but it was just one guy in the NHL. I, I, maybe Victor Mete, but I don't think he was at the event in question. But he, oh, okay. I think of he, that group, he was loaned to the team. I can't remember anyone else. But um, but at the same time, like just general, because at least the lawsuit just named the CHL and that, so maybe it's just those players. But where are the CHL in all this? Well, that's, a, that's what I want to know. Because it feels like every other year now, there's some big thing coming about the CHL and that. Where, I'm I'm just curious. Where is everything going to them? That's what I'd like to know. They've been pretty slow with a lot of things that have been happening, and I think it's it just goes back to like the point I was saying before, where with with a tournament like this, it does really bridge between the lower levels of hockey and you know really the big show on things, and it's just again, I think. And I'm not, you know, I'm not talk, speaking for them, but I really do feel like the CHL is just, they're just having the same NHL problem right now where these things are coming up and the response is so slow that it's like, oh, you got me. I didn't do anything about this. Now I have to say something, but I'm not saying anything productive. Wait, sir, go ahead, Alex. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, you asked where they are. Well, they're enjoying the Memorial Cup. That's true. That's what they're focusing on right now. That's true. Uh, so from there, uh, unless there's anything else you guys want to add, I think we got the big details of it, but like do better. I just, I want to add one thing because I was talking with someone and they were just asking the question in terms of what are we expecting to get out of this hearing more so. And for me, I think, and and you guys tell me if you think differently, but for me, what I think is ex- uh, extremely important here, of all of this is, I think this has showed us that there needs to be a little more transparency. And and you know, every we're all look, uh, people were looking at a couple of weeks ago, uh, what's going on with 
uh, Canada soccer and, and the stuff going on there. And some of that has to, or quite a bit of it has to do with transparency. And to me, if, public dollars are going towards something, I expect a hell of a lot more transparency. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't necessarily think they've been extremely transparent uh, hockey Canada for many, many years now. So you, if you guys think differently, I'd love to hear that too. Daniel, go ahead. I think for me, um, like one thing I just kind of take out of it is because we do think as journalists have a lot more knowledge now, more of the insight of what's going on in hockey and I think, you know, we talked about so much about the Chicago Blackhawks. We talk about that dynasty. We talk about the Cups. But for me, when I think about that World Junior team now, completely tarnished. Um, mm-hmm. The way I, I'm, I'm seeing it now is just how things were prompted up for that team and what we actually saw. For example, like that was considered the, you know, grinded out, like, you know, good guys, like good Canadian boys type of team there was not really a superstar on that team and you know that's what we were being fed and I, I agree with Alex said but there has to it has to mean something when you wear that maple leaf and I don't want it to just be because it's based on their talent mm-hmm. but I also want to see it based on their conduct listen going into that whole presser whatever hearing uh I, I thought we would get some bad stuff out of it obviously I didn't think we were going to get names or anything but like going forward, I fully expect, beside the transparency, is I, I, I'm just I'm I'm curious who's going to try and dig up more here. Is it going to be the government or will it be the NHL? Um, I, right now, I'm just thinking of I'm not right now. My mind isn't so much on how hockey Canada are going to improve. Um, I'm just now thinking I, my mind is in a place where I want to know who these eight were. I want to know if they're playing in the NHL. And I was speaking with someone about this. How I find it very difficult to believe that every single one of the players at that event, how no one spilled the beans. Kale McCarr was at that tournament or sorry, I believe was at the event. He's in the cup final right now and just won the Norris trophy. I need to know how deep it is. Why no one spoke. We need more details. Like, that's what I want right now. And what I'm expecting is uh, we're not going to get every answer here, but there needs to be consequences. I think we, I don't think we have the exact answer, but I think we can definitely go off of uh, our hockey history. When you ask the question, how deep does it, or not how deep does it go, but how did no one spill the beans? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. It's just the way it's just the way it is. It's not a good, I'm not saying it's a good enough answer. Yeah, no, I get just, it. It's the, I think it's the extremely obvious answer to your questions when in the settings like these, and I think people would very much admit this. Mm-hmm. A lot of things are very much. It happened. Shh. There's listen. I think there's a lot we would like to say, but at the same time, The problem is none of this was proven in court. There was no guilty, guilty, guilty. So we have to be careful. But I think we all have a certain thought in mind as to why something has happened or hasn't happened in this case. Um, Yeah. I think we leave it there for now. We see where it goes. It's very interesting because it feels like this is being talked a lot more on Hockey Night in Canada than that. Um, I. I'm not going to say why I think it's being covered more, but I'll keep that to myself as well. But it is nice to see that it's being talked about more. Um, And listen, do I have faith that the NHL will find more and do more? I I don't know. I I don't. Maybe it's because I just, I don't, I don't. Um, It is a very difficult turn as always, but now we go to the NHL. We go to with the couple and there's, we still it's coming back on there we right? go you're good you're good okay um at least it didn't cut out too bad when we were talking about the serious stuff the rest of it's whatever okay game three um just like that darcy kemper gets chased um as tampa get back into the series of the home uh it does look like that nazim kadji will be playing today guys and well 
Before I complained about how Emily Arena is, a, is, I almost said a very bad word, is a very bad arena full of very quiet fans, um, Tampa showed up again and they proved why they're good. Stop me if you've heard it before. Your tweet came true, Adam, by the way, when you said you didn't like to see people counting them out. And Tampa really did respond. <laughs> History repeats itself, didn't, man. Did it not happen last series against New York? It's After happened they every were... series except the second round because the Panthers got slapped. It, Again, it's happened for three years. Round one. Did I not? Did we on this podcast? Did we not say in round one? You just wait. In round, well, round two, again, like you said, in round three, they're down to nothing. Yep. It's okay. They might not win it, but they're not going to get killed. I almost promise you this team will not get killed. And again, I wasn't here last episode, but was I a little, I was a little worried. I will not. I was a little worried because this is a different, Colorado is a different beast. Yep. But again, this is a team that's done it before, despite what people want to put asterisks and baloney on it. Yeah. Um, this is a team that I think has, like, don't ever forget that they played the New York Island. Like, and I get it. You look at the New York Islanders this year and blah, 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 blah. But don't ever forget what the New York Islanders were the last two years and how much of a pain they were to play against, in the, especially in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've mentioned it, like they've played great teams along the way. Like you don't, you don't trip and skip and fall your way into a Stanley cup, much less two in a row for a chance of the third. I think a big thing was, I think Vasilevsky had a really good bounce back. Um, oh, sure. well, and I, well, I think, let's be honest. I think the game sort of changed with that coach's challenge. Okay. So Friedman at intermission was talking about the coach's challenge. He was sort of saying about how normally coaches have said that they get around 40 seconds to decide if they want to challenge the goal. Cooper got a minute 20. I, I, listen, I was watching that game and I was like, okay, great. Here's the review. And you know, I, I'm a little biased because I want the abs. Nate dog. I love me some Nathan McKinnon. Um, and I was like, let's go. I'm rooting for Bowen Byer and all that kind of stuff. Right. But I'm like, okay, here we go, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, and then the, the goal happens and it just sucks all momentum out of viewing. It was great for Tampa because it sort of saved the night for them. And then they just didn't look back, but can we put like a timer? 40 seconds max then because they, they looked at Cooper. He said, no, they went to drop the puck. And if he had waited three more seconds, play was on, but he said, Oh no, no, I'll come back here. Video coach finally found a good angle. What are we doing? Minute 20. It's long. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's not unfair. good. That's not it, I'm sure. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's unfair. There's a lot of unfair things in the NHL, Daniel, but um, I, I think it's, it's just like, come on. Like there's a limit, right? Uh, or there should be. It's just like, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing here? Cause this isn't the first time in the playoffs. I feel like we've talked about this. Um, probably not the first time since it was introduced that we talked about this, but Let's minute 20, a little too much. Yeah. I don't like slowing the game down, Daniel. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It just, there is that like energy, that momentum that you want to maintain. And I think coaches too want to be in that mindset. And that, that really did mess things up. Like not completely, but it was just, it was definitely something that, you know, you, know, you got to tinker with this quite a bit. A tinker, just make a rule. Like it's, we've seen so many times these playoffs where now there's a goal. Okay, hold on, make sure it's good. Make sure it's good. Um, it just ruins the viewing experience. Not to mention, I thought the angles they showed on TV weren't 100 percent conclusive. That's just my opinion, though. I think there was one that was like a diagonal, sort of off the ground look, but I didn't see the goal line cam, so that probably showed a good one. But I didn't. I, well, then again, Colorado have benefited from some, from some pretty good calls their way. Um, Emily Arena, you, you have maybe the best team of all time in front of you. Make a bit more noise. You know what I mean? Just a little bit more. It oh, just really? bothers me. Oh, man. I thought they were great in round one. I, well, <laughs> I mean, you know, 
Uh, yeah, are we sure you were right? See, here's the thing, Alex. Watching that series against the Leafs, I always got it mixed up who was the home team because they're the same colors. Right. So I'd be like, oh, the arena's great here. Wait a minute, we're in the ACC, so Scotiabank Arena, which is weird enough because it came alive this playoffs. I know. Like, are you sure you weren't rewatching? And it was like, oh, no, this is man, I'm telling you, I actually, game. no, no, man, I'm dead serious. I, maybe I, you know what? I haven't been able to watch as much live hockey as I would have liked recently, but um, I don't know. I thought they were pretty lively but maybe i'm wrong uh, all i all I'm, i'll tell you what i told will baldwin i've seen more energy the game against columbus on a tuesday night for the bell center i i just like it's the, cup against the arizona like, coyotes like and you go to their viewing party outside and they're like hey and then you well, see, it's because they're all drenched in sweat because of how hot it is oh and then it was raining too i get it but it's it, it was really funny to see the cameras like denver sunshine tampa bay rain you're like that Wait That's a minute. That's not right. But like it's on point, to... the lightning. You need you need rain oh. for the lightning. Be the thunder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just thought they could have done more because I think I think Ball Arena has been so great, and we talked about it last episode, Daniel. I just expect a bit more. Maybe um, it's because of this. The Ball Arena slash Pepsi Center have waited twenty one years for this. <laughs> oh, maybe nice maybe, oh. maybe okay. I'm saying maybe the Lightning fans are like. We've ha- we've had this before. We, we yeah, I was about to doing. say like, when did they win again? Like two thousand four for with Marty. Which one? The Avalanche? the one with Marty Saint Louis and Vincent Trocheck. Oh yeah, that was two thousand four. Vincent. Like Vincent like Cavalier. Yeah. You I said Vincent. Vincent. Sorry, Trocheck. I said Vin- I said Marty. <laughs> okay, whoops. <laughs> it's just like the Habs front office, basically. Yeah, um, basically. Um. By the way, shout out to Nick Paul who had his traditional Tampa Bay moment. Uh, gets hurt, comes back, scores the game winner because Tampa. Man. He's been there like a month and it's like, I <laughs> uh, got the culture. Like that speaks to them off the ice. Yeah. How yeah. it bleeds onto it. And you can leave the room and everyone's like, oh, I'll be back. I'd like to say I I was wrong. I thought that was a bad trade because I thought Matthew Joseph was just, you know, it was one of those guys where like Tampa's bringing him up and just wait for him to do well. And he has done well, did really well when he got traded to Ottawa. But like that they Daniel. added a pick with him for Nick Paul and then. Daniel, this kind of happened. You questioning Julian Breeze ball? I Don't do that. Right. Come that's on. what that's there. There we go, Dan. That's why. That's what happens when you question Julian Breeze no. ball. Again, I honestly would not be surprised if they find a way to keep him. Oh, of course, of course. Um, he'll be the new, uh, the new uh, Palat probably. Hmm. Um, okay. Um, is it me, by the way, or is it, it's kind of weird to say that? I kind of think Colorado have to win Game Four, like. He, it's weird. I had a, I'd have more confidence. Even if Tampa fall on three one, I'm not too worried because it's Tampa. But if they tied the series with the momentum, I'm still kind of worried for them. It's for Colorado, I mean, even if the series goes tied because that's just the Tampa effect. I think it depends on what the game or the hypothetical like score would be. In my opinion, I think if it's another six two game, then I'd be worried. But if they lose four three or something in overtime, then it screams think, two nothing tonight. To be I fair. think it'll be okay. Yeah, I have a feeling. I don't necessarily think if Colorado loses tonight, it's bad. Just because I think you know you go home for Game Five, and good lord, that is an arena and a half um, in in Denver. So I think again, like we, know, I don't like I don't know how much a how much like home ice advantage in terms of on the ice does much, but I think them screaming out there is huge. Cause we, we were talking about that uh, in the office, just about, you know, about the team and stuff. And like, man, like when the crowd in any arena goes wild, a thousand percent gives a boost to the players. They must love it knowing that it's all directed at them. And because they're professional athletes, I don't know if they necessarily look at it in the way of, oh, I have all this pressure on me. Some of them might, and some of them find ways to overcome that. But I think a lot of them soak that in, and especially on Colorado, and and same in Tampa too, take that in, and it's just an absolute 120% boost. You know who wins game five? The first team to arrive in Colorado to get used to the altitude. <laughs> oh, for sure. Like I'm leaving tonight. Moment puck drop. I don't care if I win or lose. Is get that, on that. Get is back. Is that a legitimate argument? Because I was I was talking about the people <laughs> with that because you know, it's if if that was the reason, shouldn't have Colorado 
been the back-to-back champs, not where they are I'm, right now. I imagine that it's definitely an effect. It's probably less than we think. Because let's be honest, if you have to go to Colorado on a back-to-back, I would imagine it's death. Not just because of how good they are, but if you're doing overnight travel wherever the Colorado, I have to imagine it saps you. I, I It has to. But like, you know, it's not like they then went back to Tampa and had all the momentum. They got spanked. So it's it's not like... It's not like Goku training at 10 times Girth Avity, Earth's gravity at King Kai's planet. Nice Dragon Ball reference for you. Like, it doesn't make him stronger, so probably not. But I imagine in certain scenarios, it must. I, I think if Tampa wins game four and five. Oh, it's done. It's done. It's, it's not done. going to game seven. And no disrespect to Colorado. It's done. It's va- it's respect to Vasilevsky. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason he didn't get pulled in that other game. But uh-huh. you know, I was like, Kemper so got again, pulled. I'm like, Ooh. I mentioned it. I was so surprised. I think, um, Alex, when you uh, weren't here, but I was surprised they didn't put Brian Elliott in for like at least the last 11 minutes of the third. No. 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 Okay. Like, this is a goalie who they might not have come back, but I don't think he cares. I think, like, remember, game one against the Leafs was 5 nothing. He didn't get pulled. So just, why, what were they gonna? What was gonna? Keep them fresh. You, gonna pull? you don't pull certain goalies. You just yeah. can't do that. You can't I think do of that. the NBA rules where uh, <laughs> last three minutes is a blowout. Oh, <laughs> LeBron comes <laughs> yeah. off the court. It's amazing you won the scoring title by how many times the Lakers lost. I mean, <laughs> but again, you can't throw Russ out there. Um, <laughs> that was like Anthony Davis. I think yeah, when he wasn't shooting a basketball, it's okay. So he had he had to score. LeBron. It, it's okay. He'll be with Kyrie next year. Yeah. Man, According I saw a report. It's reports, like, yeah, it's like Kyrie's been in contact with LeBron. I'm like, is that not tampering? <laughs> Considering LeBron is basically the GM. It's like, sad. what? It's the NBA that doesn't. Yeah, exist. Miami. Yeah, remember they got fined for uh, tampering with oh, like yeah, yeah. Toronto and Kyle Lowry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then he went to Philly. Okay, uh, the award what? show. We no, can talk he went about. to Miami. Uh, so, oh yeah, why do I think no Philly were interested? Right, they didn't get him. He is from Philly though. It's yeah, that's why. That's why I was yeah. thinking. I was thinking he'd be good with Joel. Even though, like, Lowry was, like, really hurt. But that's fine. Hamstring, I think it was? Nah. That's pretty bad. Dude, wasn't the hamstring that, like, so, like destroyed Harden? James yeah, Harden. Anyway. Kind of slow. Poor old Embiid. Poor Embiid. Um, did, did, did James have the fat suit on during the playoffs? Oh my God. That's not a joke about his weight. He legit. I mean, the man the man is weird. The man's gotten two coaches fired in three years or something. Uh, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't get Doc Rivers fired. I won't lie, but James Harden, man, what a, what a for me, okay, we forget back to hockey, but for me, the the golden quote was when Joel Embiid said James Harden is not the guy he was in Houston. And I'm like, you pushed to get that guy acquired. <laughs> Listen, it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. And Dale Morey was like, hey, I like James. Anyway, remember when he referred to him as his basketball Jesus? <sighs> And then I remember Shannon Sharp was like, yeah, maybe he's actually a false prof. And they're like, oh, oh, my God, oh, that's I just, hard. I'd like to think in hockey context. Imagine if Austin Matthews said that it's like, yeah, John Tavares is not the player he was. That'd be pretty fun. Front for her. Speaking of Austin Matthews, uh, he wins both award, both of the MVP awards, the Lindsay by the players, the Pro Hockey Writers Association with the Hart Trophy, um, which is pretty good to see. Now, I just wanted to mention a few things about the ballot before we go to Austin himself. Uh, shout out to uh, Jason Robertson, who got a few fifth place votes. Yeah, uh, my boy Kirill Kaprizov at seven. Thought he maybe should have been higher. That's just me. Uh, Huberto, fifth. Shout out to the 13 guys. Uh, second place was 20 w- when it came to first place votes. Well, he was second overall as well. It was Connor McDavid with uh, 29. And Matthews wins with 119. Uh, pretty good. Alex, how does it feel? The man's done it. Yeah, it feels good, obviously. Um, as good as this it, How'd you celebrate? It? Oh, jeez. Um, I didn't. <laughs> you said nod. Okay, do it in the playoffs. The, no, man. I, again, listen. And I'm listen. I'm just. And I think he knows it himself. I'm not being critical of Austin Matthews, and he said it time and time again, man. Like all of this is great. But until you do the oh, thing, yeah. you're doing the Kobe thing where um, like Kobe has to fill one MVP and get to the finals. The job's not done. No, man. He listen. He could win no award next year, but if he wins, if God, 
if they win the cup, I will be more happy than I currently am. He needs to shave his head, though. He does. He needs to yeah, shave his head. He should go Matt Sundin. Um, I, I've just, I've been saying that. I've been saying that. The addition of can I just, can I be completely honest for a second though? I'm actually, I when I saw last night that he won the Ted Lindsay, I was like, wow. I was actually very surprised. Yeah, same, same. Like, I it, thought it, they would get. I thought the players were going to go Connor. It I caught me yeah, off guard. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, maybe it puts in perspective the achievement of hitting 60 goals. Um, you, you know what else it proves, Alex? What does it prove? That the NHL player polls were definitely done at the start of the year before he scored 60 goals. And they were like, oh, best yeah. shot, best shot. Ovechkin still, no. No, next year will be different. But like it was, I think maybe it does put in to a better, perspe- a better perspective of what scoring 60 goals does, uh, what 60 goals yeah. means, sorry. Uh, Cause like, yeah, no, I, when I saw that, I'm like, Oh, huh. That's interesting. I for think me, even it, he, sorry, Daniel, go ahead. Oh, I, I was going to say what Alex is just it for me. I think there was that reassurance with the Ted Lindsay that two things like the hype was real this year. Mm-hmm. And second, it just solidifies things that for years we've seen the here and there of like how great Austin Matthews is as a player. Where does he stack up? And I think this is just a good indication of, you know, we're getting it right, that he is this franchise player. He is like that caliber of a franchise altering type of guy that I, I, I don't know. It was just kind of gratification for the city, I think, especially like we're going to get to it. But it, like you know what we're all thinking with Keen Thompson said. Oh, you sorry. What did he <laughs> say? Because I did miss that. That's a this is a surprise to me. OK, um, he uh he shook Austin Matthews hand and then he's like, thanks guys. That's our show. And then he talked about how, like, you know, the Leafs winning something in June. Keenan Thompson, you were never funny. Okay. How about that? He did. He basically did. I didn't see that until I I didn't see that until I saw it was on the dock. I'm like, wait, remember he did the same thing to Tampa where he's like, they made the most wins uh, in regular season, then tied the record for at least amount of wins in the playoffs, which means now Alex, (laughs) the Keenan Thompson curse breaker you will now yeah. win three straight cups. Congratulations. Okay. Cool. I'll take that. You, you just have to hope now that Matthews doesn't get the cover of the NHL game again because he was no, cursed again. Exactly. We, he doesn't He doesn't need Why it. Why do they do um, two years? I don't get it. It's okay. Because they're Marketability. It's EA. Yeah. Well, that too. Um, GM connected. Are Please? we going to have the discussion? Because I know it's been going on. I see it on Twitter. Matthews McDavid? No, it no no. Oh, okay, I, is that going on on Twitter? Because like, when I, I saw Matthews say, "Yeah, I put McDavid on my Ted Lindsay," I'm like, "Okay, good." What's the debate? Um, no, no, no. They were. I just asked, talking about is Matthews the greatest leaf of all time? I know I, they oh, had okay. the discussion. He is though. He is. there's not. I, I don't. So. Even, been, I don't even think there's a debate. I've no. been going back and forth right throughout the year. At the first, I was like, no, because he hasn't won the yeah. cup. And mm-hmm. when he scored his that hat trick that I think got him past fifty, I was like, okay, yeah. See, here's the problem, because I've been getting so into basketball. And since the final started, it's all been legacy stuff. Talk about mm-hmm. Steph being in the top 10 and Kevin Durant. I keep going back and forth because I, I just think it's it's disrespectful. Okay, so okay, to so make sorry, him sorry. without a cup. If okay. he can get a cup, then a hundred hundred percent. Like I if Price won a cup, I'd say best goal in Habs history. But it's disrespectful. Mm-hmm. To Patrick Waugh and Jacques Plante and Ken Dryden to say, Kerry, my man, you're up there. You know what I mean? I think there has to be like, you know, Fair. the Dave, Dave Keon's like, excuse me? You know what I mean? It but it just mm. uh, it's it's I keep going back and forth. You know what I mean? It's it's like I think you have to there needs to be a standard with the leafs, but it's just I don't know if it's because obviously, like uh, some someone might say Sundin, but he didn't get one. Didn't win a cup. Gilmore Keenan didn't win like the cup years ago, so it's a little difficult. So, I personally, I go back and forth. I now again, I'm not a Leafs fan, so what the hell does my thing matter? I don't like him when Leafs fans debate Carey Price's legacy. So I don't know if it's my place personally. No, but I'm asking you. I'm I asking keep going you. back and forth because he's he's. I think without a doubt he's top three, but it's just I have so much. The MVP helps 100. percent Like I think he's a Hall of Famer already. That's I know. Well, I know. Okay, okay. I know. 
But okay. if you look at the like the thing of where no, that's extreme, isn't it? That's that's, dumb. that's, that's, that's me get, I'm gonna get radio for that. No, yeah. he's on track. <laughs> that's the for that's it, the social though. clip. He's on track for it. Don't do that. Don't make that. Thing. No, that was dumb. That was really dumb. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'll like, change it. He's. I cannot. The the team with the second most cups in history mm-hmm. to say their best player ever doesn't have a chip. I think it's just to quote Stephen. It's so disrespectful. Yeah, but it's disrespectful to who? Who's the great? Okay, take Mouse and Matthews out of the conversation. Who's the greatest Leaf of all time? I couldn't uh, like. Ke- I, can- I was saying Keenan earlier. I meant Keon. Keon, mm-hmm. Keon or Salming probably. Maybe but, one of those. Man, but I think I think Matthews is better than them. I but he doesn't have the ring. Legacy yeah. man, we can't. Well, you need a ring to be up there. But, you need a chip. but so Salming didn't have a ring with the Leafs. No, he didn't. Not? He the 70s. No. Oh, so how is so? Oh, then it has to be. It has to be. It has to be. Johnny Keon. Bauer. It has to be. <laughs> Goals yeah, but then so you're bad. but then you're talking up then and then you're then you're comparing a and this is and it's and it's oh. an interesting thing because then you're talking about a league that had six teams in it versus yeah. a current league that has thirty two. It's definitely part of the debate, like a, a thousand, a thousand, what, a thousand percent. What is it? Michael Jordan says it's disrespectful to com- to compare eras. He's easily sure. the best Leaf, the most talented, the most electric leaf in history it's just again i didn't even know if solving how to ring no. i, I should have known listen that, there's like there's just, two the two of the most uh talented leafs in history currently right play on the team yeah i agree that's a that. fact that's yeah. a fact there's a yeah. difference i'm not saying they're the greatest i'm not saying mitch marner is the greatest or up there yet he might be one day but what I'm saying is, is talent wise, these two are the top. I don't even think that's a, I, I don't know if that's, I like question. to say also one point too, as well is, and I'll, I also like just as a part of context here, I'm not going to compare because we were not around for quite some time for sure. The Leafs dynasty and uh-huh. the six teams. Um, no, but way. I'm going to kind of compare it to the other guys. We did mention that, you know, for a lot of the years we were not born, but, we have a general understanding of how their careers went. And Mm -hmm. I think the biggest difference here is not only did the Leafs get, you know, two potential franchise guys through the draft and are homegrown in that way, but yeah, they are kind of a lot better when you compare them to who were the other stars in the eras before when they made the playoffs, because I'm just going to name a few Matt Sandin, Doug Gilmore, Mm -hmm. Alexander McGillney. None of them were drafted by the Leafs. Is Peter Forsberg not one of the greatest avalanche of all time? Wasn't drafted by them. No. Is Jerome McGinley the greatest flame of all time? Yes. Was he drafted by them? No. But if you compare the numbers, you know what I'm talking about? Come on, Daniel. It's I'm a cherry gonna compare on the top. Num- I don't know. Even like, Matthew, that's a like, cherry on top. The, I, I do on. agree with that. I, I okay. like that point. I think, that, I think that's an added bonus to all of this, to the fact that that – you know, they, they drafted and developed him in a, in a league that loves to talk about the draft in the NHL. Yep. I yep. think that that's an, it's an added bonus here. I get, listen, I think you have like, there has to be some context here, right? You do have to look and say the Leafs have not won a Stanley cup since 1967. So yeah. if the, if the, if the, that significantly reduces the pool of players that you can go through, because I think, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, um, I was thinking that, but I didn't want to say it. I'm like, does it, it is it more difficult because there's the bridge there without the chip? Uh-huh. Oh, a thousand percent. You know what I mean? A thousand percent. And and in your and like literally, Matthew, if by your definition, and I don't necessarily disagree with you, I just I think you you have to go greatest. It's not I'm saying the greatest of all time. It's the greatest Toronto Maple belief of all time. So you gotta look at the context. Let here. me ask you guys this. Okay. Who's the greatest, greatest, greatest one of all time? The you cut out there. Greatest who? The greatest remember. Pittsburgh penguin of all time. I, I'm going somewhere with this. Who is the greatest penguin of all time? Marilyn Mew. Ooh. Alex, are you thinking about it? You're thinking about it. I have a, I'm going to use like a trump card with this when Alex is. No, answering. okay, okay, yeah. I, Alex I is thinking re- about it though. I'm just double checking something here. I'm... It's difficult. I think it's Mario Lemieux though. 
I okay. do. I, I yeah. You have to think about it though, right? Oh, it's definitely a debate between Lemieux and Crosby. What if Crosby didn't have a ring? That was an argument I remember be- before 2016 really? because like he only has one, and then that was the year Pittsburgh almost like at the beginning of the season they looked like they were not making the playoffs, and then Flurry went on a tear, and then they got Mike Sullivan, and then things changed. And then the argument there is though you know, but they legit you know they played together, so there was that oh, balance when the Leafs. It's like before Matthews, it was. Uh- are you, are you asking, are you saying if we just remove Crosby's cups, but everything else is the same? Yes. Yeah. I, then, I, I, is I still it not think, instantly? No, I still think there's de- definitely a, 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 a debate. I still pick Mario Lemieux, but I still think, do, oh, come on, man. Like Sidney Crosby is like the best power forward to ever play the game. And he's grinder, not even, Alex, grinder. grinder. And he's not even like a grinder by definition. Like, Technically, right? He just he's just that's the way he that's just the way he plays. Um I don't know. I still think it's it's definitely a debate. Is the greatest LA king of all time. Before we get to that, I just like to say my Pittsburgh argument first is I'm not gonna just look at the championship thing, but I'm also I'm the Trump card I had was the Michael Jordan effect. Not that Mary Lemieux, like you know, he was considered one of the greatest, probably second best in his era because of Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. But I'm using the Michael Jordan context in terms of what he did for Pittsburgh and that team. And that's why I consider him the greatest. And just the way, like, we, I know Crosby and him have both gone through challenges, but I think the way Lemieux's been able to do that and just the way we saw him later in his career as well and what he did for the team, I think that's why. Like, you can't separate Pittsburgh and Mary Lemieux. Okay. So who is the greatest LA King of all time? And then who's, we can move on. Because... Who's the greatest LA King of all time? Yeah. Greatest. Luke Robitaille. The greatest LA King. Sorry, Daniel. Luke Robitaille. You're saying Luke Robitaille. Okay. Um... And Robitaille doesn't have a ring, does he? No, he does with Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, but he doesn't have it with LA. Not with the King. No, <laughs> oh, going to say didn't the 24 the 2012 kings were the first ring so who's the greatest la la king of all time because this may who actually do you think it is who do you think it is Justin Brown, no. it's no, so no. difficult to not say wayne but then it, the immediate answer you would say is marcel dion right but everyone mm. forgets he exists and he's the greatest to never have a ring. But then we're saying we're not even thinking about Kopitar or Dowdy and they brought the chips when it is 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 robotized one of the greatest scorers ever and him and dion are like the two two of the greatest goal scorers of all time and gretzky but he didn't win but it's gretzky it's 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 a very difficult debate their sides they're sitting on other sides i'd say yeah, i think thing, i'd go with yeah. marcel dion to be honest the, the like, gap it's go ahead so it's like wayne gretzky on the list of the rangers or the Blues? No, because that was that was it. <laughs> there was still him in St. Louis. Like if you have it like a St. Louis Gretzky jersey, it's like, what are you doing? Like those two don't really count. It's it's Edmonton and LA Wayne. Okay. Okay. Uh shall we go on? It's it's yeah, difficult. Sure, let's go. <laughs> but I definitely think the divide does not help that between Keon and now color has come to television. Literally. One thing I'd like to also say as well, just yes. to help with Alex and never giving up on hope. Yes. The Chicago Cubs went over a hundred years between their World Series wins. The last time they won. Don't even say that to me. You know that there's there's still 30 30 more years until we even touch a hundred, at least 30 more years until we touch a hundred. Can we not? Let's let's not do that. I just want to mention is there was a crazy tweet. I remember when they won in 2016. They're Mm -hmm. like the last time the Chicago Cubs won the World Series, Istanbul was still Constantinople. (laughs) <laughs> but what year so that a world war hadn't happened yeah no. that's insane <laughs> the radio didn't exist yeah <laughs> you know that does not i if you thought that was gonna make me feel better i, I thought i don't know i thought it was interesting um, like, okay i'm sorry <laughs> moritz cider <laughs> yeah wins the calder trophy you know what i rewatched was. today what I rewatched the video of him getting drafted because it's so yeah, funny. Yeah, I saw gasped. that too. Yeah. And even he like goes in his hair, he's like, what? Like even he's completely yeah. shocked. Dropped. And it I worked. Think, yeah. Like really? the NHL, I think they posted that too, where they showed between the years. 
And it's crazy now looking back on like how great that pick was, even oh, yeah. though everyone thought this guy should have gone a lot later. It's it's the same thing as Breeze Ball. Trust, trust uh, Iserman. Trust him. Yeah. Trust him. Uh, Bunting did not win it, Alex. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't even have Bunting on my uh, as my winner. So Can you imagine if he won. Oh my gosh. I'd laugh. A shout out to the people of Scarborough because of Michael Bunting. I'd literally laugh if he won. Um, my mic has just decided to stop working now, so that's Unbelievable. fun. Unbelievable. Uh, shout out Caulfield, ninth. Let's go. Woo! Top 10. Ah, Basu and Angles can put Carey Price. A lot of French reporters had Caulfield on their ballot. Didn't do the same hmm. for Price in the Masterton. Okay. That's I interesting. See that. I see that. I see that. Basu and Angles had him on it. I had Carey too, but I just wanted to point that out. I'm amazed he got votes. I'm happy. I'm happy for him. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Makar wins the Norris, obviously. Uh, he actually had less first place votes than Roman Yossi, which I was surprised by. Okay. Here's something we need to talk about here. Okay. There was one person who had Chris Tanev on their ballot. He had a fifth place vote. Do you guys know who it was? Yeah, it was- I saw the. Yeah, I job. saw that. Yeah. Thomas Drantz. So I looked at that and I saw whoever this was left off. Obviously, Makar and Norris, uh, sorry, Makar and Yossi, I don't think had a single like fifth place vote on their ballot. So like you knew it wasn't them. So I looked at it and I thought somebody has left off Hedman, Ekblad, Slavin, or Adam Fox. And I saw I saw Drance. He put Chris Tanev on his ballot over Adam Fox. The reigning defending Norris Trophy winner, which is crazy. I cannot yeah. believe it, and I he believed it. He believed he but had I, some of like honesty. Do you think he had a better year than Adam Fox? And he said I, yes. I, I, I can't tell if he's actually being serious, I, but uh, no, <laughs> no. Kind of the defensive he, defenseman. He definitely didn't have a better year than Adam Fox, but he's definitely had he, a hell of a year in Calgary. He's not a better defensive defenseman than Jacob Slavin. Or Miro Haskinen. What are we doing? At Chris Tanner? The West. I, well, he's, the I, West saw, I don't know who texted in the group chat, but I saw someone say he's not Calgary's best defenseman. He's that Calgary's was Mike. Best, yeah, he's yeah, no, he actually isn't. Defenseman. Yeah, he's not. He's Calgary's best defenseman. Well, Hedman's so, better. No, he's Calgary. He was Calgary's best defenseman. He was Calgary's so best defenseman. Well Guys, was he was best Calgary's best, best defenseman <laughs> this year. There's no, like, they crumbled. Sorry. Did I, anyone? I mean, did we all watch the Edmonton I mean, series? Hannafin was better than Tanev, in my opinion, or more steady. You know, I, uh, no man, better. no. He was, he was Tanev was. They crumbled without him. He man, was injured on the ice, and they crumbled. Man, I also, know. More love to Oliver Shillington as well. We didn't mention him on the blue line. Adam Fox, though. No, no. I'm not I'm sorry. I'm not defending the pick. I'm just saying he was Calgary's best defenseman. And did he crumble without Chris Tanev, who then tried to play through a broken body, basically is what it was. Um, yeah, Keenan Thompson, you knew it was Daniel putting on because he said OG Mighty Duck 2. I like to, um, that's actually a typo. He's actually not an OG Mighty Duck. He, he appeared in D2, the Mighty Ducks for Team USA. So not, He's not that old, Dan. He's not that OG of a Mighty Duck. <laughs> uh, Igor Shosturkin wins the Vesna. What? No way. Uh, what? We can move on. Um, Frederick Anderson was not even nominated. I, I don't agree with this. Yeah, well, you know. Um, okay, here's what's really, really annoying. Okay, so um, the Jim Gregory finalists are out. Not the winner, the finalist. Um, it's Chris Drewy of the New York Rangers, Joe Sackick of Colorado, Julian Breezeball of Tampa Bay. Hey, Alex. That's, that's going to be What do those three have in common? Huh. They're yeah. all in the final four. They all made the final four. Okay. And guess what? The Panthers got miraculously better, got a miracle vote for Zito last year. The Rangers exceeded expectations. Chris Drewy, who signed Barclay Goudreau and the rest of it, Jeff Gordon did. Yeah. It's, again, I'm, I'm, I'm back, guys. I'm back with my GM of the Year award. It's, it, it needs to be Julian Breesbaugh or it's, it's a travesty. I, I copy, paste, take out Breezeball, Joe Sackick. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, it, it, the missed. winner will be announced ha- midway through the NHL draft. I Bye. think they should do it after the 15th over, or nope, the 16th overall pick. 
I don't, yeah, I don't get this. So, Adam, we'll get to see uh, the Jim Henry Award. <laughs> I can't wait to boo Julian Breesball because you know he will be. Uh, oh. No, he will. it's going to be Chris Drury. Like, that for sure. It's going to be That'd be, Chris be such an NHL thing if Chris Drury <laughs> Jeff Gordon goes, and he, he's on stage, and he's like, shout out Jeff Gordon. Thanks for doing all the work. They put um, Jeff Gordon and Chris Drury, you know, Jeff Gordon shaking his hand. Giving exactly. Him the award. Uh, I don't really care about the all teams. I never really have, but we can talk about them anyway. Uh, the all rookie team, Bunting, Zgrass, Raymond, mm. Carrier, Cider, Swayman. Do you see how all of a sudden Cider's name is Cedar, by the way? I'm not, Cedar? No, we're not doing that. People are like, no, they say it's Maurice Cider. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. No, Wait, we're not changing it, oh, it okay, all okay. of a sudden. Maurice, no, no it's Moritz. We're not doing Moritz. this. We're calling him Mo. Mo, Mo Cider, exactly. Uh, Swayman, the, the goalie. Uh, the first all-star team. See, we have the same problem here that we did in the NBA with with, uh, with Jokic and Embiid, and they're both centers, funny enough, for this. Um, Connor McDavid had 120 points and is on the second all-team. But the first one, Goudreau, Matthews, Marner, Yossi, Makar, Shesterkin, the second team, Huberto, McDavid, Kachuk, Matthew, Hedman, McAvoy, and Markstrom. I like I, to uh, just clarify: it is Johnny Goudreau, not Barclay Goudreau, on the first yeah. team. Yeah, yes, Dan, yes. Or his um, brother. I, the one yes. thing I have is I actually think I think Kachuk should have been on that that first one over Marner, in my opinion. Or even yeah. like take out either of the wingers and throw McDavid on the first. Who cares about the position thing? Yeah, but the position's clearly very important. Oh my god! Did you remember when Ovechkin was on both teams because he was a left, he was the left winger and the right winger? I think this was like two thousand and. Don't they get bonuses, or is that only an NBA thing? Uh, yeah. That's also in baseball. No, because no, um, if you win no the World bonuses. Series, for example, I think like this was a few years ago. You get three hundred twenty thousand dollars if you win the World <laughs> Series. Imagine if Ovechkin back then they did have that and he got double the paycheck, and his owner is like, "Oh, what do I do? Suck it." I think uh, oh, rookies like- rookies get the bonus. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't like that Kaprizov isn't on this in some way, too. Move over, Hubert. Oh, yeah, you heard me right, Baumgartner. I want Kaprizov on there. Yeah, Alan Walsh, if you're listening. I don't think yeah, you are, but Alan over. Walsh. Um, it, is it just me? or I felt like this year's awards were very like, yeah, that's fine. He won. Well, like I, were well, Unless I missed it. Oh, People really? were upset with Makar. A lot of Preds yeah. fans were like, Yossi, and it's like, yeah. but he doesn't play yeah, defense, yeah. so no. But- it felt to me, especially the way they did the other awards and then how they're going to do the Jim Gregory, it's it's like, it's not like, you know, we're celebrating these players. It's more of, I guess we have to do this and tell the fans who won these awards. Like, they're obliged to do it. They're not actually enthusiastic. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. I've just made a mistake. Uh, oh, goodness gracious. Um, uh, can I control Z? I just deleted yeah. notes. I can't because I closed. I'll do it. it. I'll right. do it. I'll do it. Okay, I'll good. do it. We'll um, talk. Coaching. I almost went to Star Wars, but no. Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. I, I deleted them on my notes too. Hold on. We're just going to pan it quickly because I deleted the notes on the coaching news. But okay. Gonna, as we, there okay, we go. Okay. There we okay. go. Okay, um, so first off, Jay Woodcroft at Edmonton seemed to have made an official three-year contract extension, about $200 million a year per cap friendly. Right choice. Good. Yes. Good. Um, is this the right choice? Pete DeBoer in the Dallas Stars, four-year point, $4.25 million per. Uh, Nate Graff from Sportsnet wanting to uh, be very upset with it, what he was. Um, is that the right hire? Pete DeBoer. I Under. don't think so. Because, and I'm not like, I think he's a coach. He's a very situational coach. And I think I just based on the experience that he had that, you know, he comes in with a team that is already kind of constructed, but the way, and I think I'm just going to base this on how we view what the stars are going to be like in the next few years is I think they're, they're going to go through a rebuild. Um, They kind of have to, especially with the prospects they have in the system, you know, Jason Robertson, is a full-time NHLer now, and a lot of the guys I don't think are those type of pillars. Like I'm thinking of a Thomas Harley or a Ty Delandria, and I I don't know. This was something where it it doesn't it didn't sit well with me or did it as a good fit. Two things. First off, before I throw it to Alex, first mm-hmm. off, uh, they're not going to rebuild Daniel. 
because they have they don't have the cap space to do so because they paid Ben, they paid Sagan, uh, and the money they lose from Radulov, who's apparently going to the KHL, no surprise, oh, yeah, that. is immediately going to Jake Ottinger and Jason Robertson, who I believe both need contracts. Uh, second off, I don't think Pete DeBoer is a good coach, and uh, I'm going to laugh at the Dallas Stars. Alex, go ahead. I can't wait to talk about them when they get Jeff Petrie. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, Jake, um, I got to feel bad for Jake Ottinger uh, yep. to start. Now, I agree with both of you. I I don't see the fit here at all um, in Dallas. But that being said, when I heard the Pete DeBoer to Dallas stuff, I'm like, that makes sense. Like, it, I, I think in my head, it didn't necessarily fit. I'm like, I, I don't know if the, like, if the Dallas Stars are going to be a different team. I feel like they're going to be the exact same team. I feel like we're going to see no difference than what we saw. Um, why can't I remember his name? Uh, Rick Bonus, probably. Rick Bonus. Sorry, yeah. under Rick Bonus. Uh, the stars are so boring, you couldn't remember their coach's name. I'm no sorry. One, no, I, no one blames you. He has the, doesn't he have the most appearances as a coach? I do feel yeah, a little he, bad um, that, about that. Assistance included, he has yeah, the yeah. most coaching ever. Yeah. I do feel a little bit bad about that. But I thought Florida should have gotten Rick Bonus in some way, by the way. In in any in some way or as head like coach, I have him as like an associate if he wanted to beside Burnett. Instead, they go with Paul Maurice. Um, now this is from Frank Saravelli. Uh, he tweeted, "Hearing the Florida Panthers are expected to introduce Paul Maurice as their next head coach, perhaps tomorrow." Sources say that Andrew Burnett will be offered a significant role or, to remain with the team if he's interested. <laughs> I doubt it. Um, and he also cites that uh, Jaron Jurger was the first to report it. Uh, I saw a joke. Jonathan Huberto needs to play defense. See, Paul's Maurice comes in and said, I don't have to. Thank God. Why? Paul Maurice, why? Billy, no. I mentioned I, it to you guys before. Like, Bill Zito was on such a roll with what he's then, been able to do. And, and you then know, you, he's okay, an unprotected first round pick for Ben Sherratt. Like, and go yeah. against Paul Maurice. The way I kind of saw it was, you know, as you Burnett, I know that was not. At all, a great series against Tampa. I mean, they kept or it Washington game four, or, or Washington, Washington, to be honest. But wouldn't you want to give the guy the full year? Wouldn't you want to just try to see how he things go to a president's trophy? Yeah, like, like man, what amid are we doing? like a huge controversy with Joel Quenville, you still managed to keep the team focused and get the president's trophy. That's exactly uh, true. I'm yeah, no, I'm. I didn't get this at all. Again, Paul Maurice, another guy who, if he went to Dallas, I would have said, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but, yeah. you know, I, I look at floor, how Florida played this year, and it was very fast, right? You know, and that, that uh, cost them in the playoffs. That did a little bit. I think, you know, when you go up against uh, Tampa, meh, I think it kind of screwed with them a little when you allowed Tampa to completely slow down the game and you were so unable to strip club. Yes. And so did Washington too, right? Again, Washington, I think slowed down when they won, slowed down the game. And yeah. I don't think Tampa, uh, Florida was able to adapt. Um, but again, now we're going from one, not like extreme to another extreme, but one side to the other where it's, I don't know, like, did, I don't, I didn't look at Winnipeg and say, man, they play some fast hockey. I think they played some very structured hockey and maybe that's what Florida needs. Who knows? But again, like the, if you look at what the pieces they have, I think this is going to be, and this is going to be a bit of a transition uh, for the, for the, Panthers uh, and they'll still be well, but that uh, it's still going to be a transition. Ken Hughes is counting every loss the Panthers get with sparkles in his eyes. Next oh year. yeah, and so will I. It's like you went from Hellebuck to Bobrovsky, who's still kind of shaky, and like like you have a better defense, I guess. Not well, who knows how it looks after this off season because uh, there's just there's a lot there. At least he went from Shifley to Barkov. That's such an upgrade. Um, but I. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like the hiring at all. I thought they could have done something more creative. Um, I, I feel really, really bad for Andrew Burnett, like coach of the year finalist and boom, doesn't have a job. And he like did everything. He handled the, the Quinville situation poorly, letting him go back to the bench. 
even if they got someone who, who to hire, I wanted a coach that could keep your players accountable. And Paul Maurice never, ever, ever held sh- like Shifley and Wheeler accountable. He rode Ehlers in the worst way possible. I uh, I don't I just didn't I don't love it. He he's getting a better team, but I just uh, I don't know. And then obviously questions about Bobrovsky's future and that. Like as in, is he going to be good? Are they going to try and trade him because the contracts? And I I don't like it. I don't I I really don't like it. Um, I like Woodcroft by the way, and Pete DeBoer I think is a mess as well. But I said he's <laughs> a bad coach, so sorry to repeat myself. It's um, for me. I think it's a delicate situation now in Florida because. This rise is it's not like it was just a sudden thing, but there is a balance there that you have your star guys, but you also had a lot of guys that they performed above what we saw them for the rest of their career. And I think that they needed a bit of that system to thrive. And I think you bring in not just a coach that's going to change things, but a guy that he has his own style of things, what you mentioned, Adam. And I'm thinking about it right now. Is Are these guys going to improve? Are we going to still be able to see the type of production we're expected out of these types of players? Or is this just going to be another step back? All right. With that, anything else to say to hockey or do we finish with Kenobi? No, let's go. Let's go. Let's give go. me Kenobi. All right. We'll hurry up and finish because the game's starting soon. Um, spoiler alert for episodes five, mainly six of Obi-Wan Kenobi. If you Again, haven't been spoiled by Twitter already. If if you're only here for the hockey, see you on Sunday. Da, 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 as we do every week. Okay. <laughs> Kenobi. Hello there. Oh my God, what a finale. Yeah. What an actual, what a champ. Like, listen, the hello there at the end, like, that's good fan service. That isn't too much. It isn't forced. I like that. Yeah. Um, where do we start? I don't know. Um, okay. Everywhere. Let's just quickly wrap up episode five very quickly because it wraps it. First off, Tala and the loader bot being killed. That's what you should have done in episode four. Rip loader bot. What a great guy. <laughs> Droids love self-sacrifice in Disney. They love it. Um, shout out, call General Grievous for all those lightsabers Obi-Wan found. He's going to add them all to his collection. Uh, I said, okay, we're good again because it was series was good again. Um, Reva you got her call, episode. You called it. You called it on her, by the way. Yeah, you called it on her with the. Uh, I, I, I already kind of knew it when they showed like yeah. the Jedi, the Jedi uh, temple no in episode scene. one. Yeah, you knew something was going to be there. Um, one thing for me is just, I guess, a bit more love, not from the Clone Wars, but from the motion picture aspect of it, that we got to see Padawan Anakin again. I was a little annoyed at that at first, but he was. Like, you could tell he was. It is an older hating Christmas. <laughs> oh God, yeah. And yeah. the screenshots of him killing the younglings was like that. They have not de-aged him. Yeah. He, they have not de-aged him because he's getting Grand Marv Tark in him. No, they did not. No, or Leia. I think yeah. he's supposed to be like young, like early t- or like mid twenties in mm-hmm. like this time. Because so here's what I was worried about. Because in that episode and in that flashback, it was cool to see, but they were focusing on. Listen, I don't love movie Anakin except episode three because he's a brat in the first two. Especially, I Attack of the Clones is my least favorite Star Wars film. I think it sucks. I think it sucks. The dialogue is the worst it's been. I don't. Well, we love the, the arena movie. battle. You know, I do. Yes. I might have yes. to agree with you there, Adam. Um, and the Escape from Camino is pretty cool, but it is just I hate it so. I hate that movie, and I'm a prequels per. I hate that movie, so. I, of course, Matt Lancher is my Obi-Wan. I love the Clone Wars series. And I wanted to focus on that guy and not the brat Anakin. But what they did in the finale was they did a good job of when he's saying, Leia, like, these are the properties you've gotten from, from both your parents. And then he re- and this is such an important thing of Vader's character. Is Anakin and Vader are two different people? It's really weird to explain, but they really solidified that in the finale. Yeah. Like I thought for a second Anakin came back and it's sort of signified by the goal of Obi-Wan's lightsaber and when Vader in the most emotional scene ever and the, the mix of James Earl Jones and Hayden Christensen's voice. I love that. You didn't kill Anakin. And it's like, I'm about to cry. I did. And the light comes back. Wait, so can, I, can I ask? Can I ask you a question yes. before we move yes. on from that point? Because I'm like, no, 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 because I'm curious. Because 
I know we, we were we had talked about it before, but I, like I think you can absolutely see the similarities between Anakin and Darth Vader in their yes. in their yes, they're different people, a hundred percent. But I think and and I think they do a really good job in the show in explaining that in episode five, where he essentially where from the entire show, for the most part, they're walking you through both Anakin and Obi-Wan's process while they're in a fight. Mm-hmm. And then you see Darth, then then you see Darth Vader do the exact same thing. So like, I, what do you mean like that? They're in what way oh. are they different? Cause like in that sense of how he explained it, they're still the same person. So what, what I saw is it was more the, the bad side of Anakin. Mm-hmm. So the lack of patience and all that, mm-hmm. the things that undid Anakin. And if you watch the Clone Wars series, as you have, Alex, you see that there <laughs> that was, was a that was a dig at Daniel. That was a dig <laughs> yeah, at Daniel. Oh, yeah. um, but there is a kindness. There is a hero in Anakin Skywalker. Sure. But unfortunately, in Star Wars media, it's after Attack of the Clones. So when I saw that freaking braid, I'm like, like, the seriously, episode two, Anakin makes me so mad. And he's my favorite Star Wars character, right? Anakin Sky, but it's epi- it's it's Clone Wars and Episode Three. Anakin, it's it showed the negativity with him, and maybe you could say the positive stuff was within Leia. I think it was Episode Two of the series we talked about, but um, it was they were showing all the bad sides of Anakin, the thing that showed that he could one day hit the dark side, the thing that the Jedi Council War is like he's this, 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 he'll never make it, and not the positive things. Now maybe once Obi Wan finally realized it wasn't his fault, it was like sort of like a a galaxy brain writing on my part, but it was just, I didn't like how it was. It made sense in the context of it to be like, this is what Anakin does wrong here, here, here. But let me say this out, Alex. I would hate it a lot more if episode six didn't happen. So for example, I don't know if I've ever shown you this. This is a bit of a spoiler for Star Wars Rebels. So excuse me, but it's very important. So as you know, in this fight, the left side of Anakin's mask was torn off, right? Really cool to see. So in Star Wars Rebels, the same thing happens to the right side of his mask. It's against Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. And they share this moment, and you will cry watching it if you've watched Clone Wars. And it's the same. She says, Anakin, and it's like, I won't leave you this time. And she's like, he says the same thing. You will die. And it's like, oh, it's it's hard. And it's actually Anakin, right? And and you hear Matt Lanter. You hear Matt Lanter. So it's, and it's, it's, you realize it's Anakin again. And it bleeds through until he says, you will die. And it was it was a really good moment because you think for a second, Anakin's going to come through. We all know he's not going to because episode four, five, and six have to happen. But it was just, it was a redeeming thing for a second. Not for us two, but also for Obi-Wan. Because he was like, we're good now. I know, I'm, my friend is dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'd, I'd be more critical of episode five, but episode six happened. Sorry, I, I went you know what? No, I Sorry, like that. I, I like, I, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead, no, I did. Daniel. I did like that part where there is that sense of relief with Obi Wan, where we we see that the return to form, Obi Wan, and the com- I guess like you know the complexity of everything that we didn't get from the movies, and I'm not I'm not saying just Clone, Wars, but I'm like I'm talking about between between three and four, that it's just okay, this happened, all this stuff happened, all of our favorite Jedi were killed, and. We go to episode four and it's just, you know, things are already established and Obi-Wan's old. It's like, no, what did he do beforehand? And why is, I think for me, it's, it's, I, I have to watch episode four again, knowing this context for an, epi- for an episode six of the series and just seeing that duel again. It's, it's, it's a cool thing because obviously in the movie, it's a plot hole that they've sort of quietly fixed. He calls him Darth instead of Anakin. So it's kind of like, why'd you call him Darth? Obviously, this was before the whole Darth is a thing of the Sith thing. This was obviously, this is George Lucas, obviously, like improvised the whole I am your father thing, right? So his name was Darth Vader. But it, they've sort of retconned that in a way, which is really nice. And the question was, how the hell did he go from nearly like emotionally being so drained in episode three to hello there, Luke, in episode four? You know what I mean? Of, of the movies. It's, it, it was a question that we needed answered in a way. And I think they did a good job. Um, yeah, I, so I, I have two things, but I'll start with the first one here. Cause I, I've seen people say it on Twitter, but I haven't really seen anyone explain it. So maybe if you've seen it as well, you can explain it better than me uh, mm-hmm. or them. 
people were saying, so this was a six episode series. Mm -hmm. People were saying that each episode correlates to the first six movies in terms of the, the path. Is that true? Okay, let's think of this. Um, so the acceptance, the thing of Vader and the, sort of the nice happy-go-lucky pro-like thing at the end works with episode six. Mm-hmm. Also, um, I'd like to mention, just, just my opinion, Adam. Yeah. Uh, episode six of the series, I think, correlates with a vulnerable Vader because we didn't see that yeah. until Return of the Jedi. Yeah. The mask coming off, by the way. Um, oh, by the way, so remember I said and Ahsoka got one side, Obi-Wan got the other. People on Twitter were like, but Luke got the whole thing off. Anyway, um, I saw episode that, yeah. three, obviously, Andy gets his butt kicked. And in episode three of the series, Obi-Wan gets burnt to death. Yeah. Um, well, in episode one, you're introduced to Leia. Episode one, you're introduced to Anakin. Yeah. Um, I'd have to think about it for episodes four and five, because okay. it's funny that in episode six, we saw the start of that recreation of episodes four shots with it's the small cruiser and then the Star Destroyer comes yeah. on and there's a bit of a chase, but it's a bit of, bit of a deception. I have to read five had the siege. Oh, like Hoth. yes. And episode four is they infiltrate to rescue the princess. Yeah. Yeah. There we okay. Go. Okay. It works. There we go. And episode there we go. five is like when they're because Reva is sort of the, 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 maybe you can see parallels between Reva. Well, I mean, it's a big reveal, I guess. That's the one thing. Yes, that's. Five. Yeah, I like it. That works okay. actually. That okay. works. So the people yeah. on Twitter weren't lying about that one. Um, my second thing, I do. Ha- no, it's not a criticism, to be honest. It's just like this was like fire. this was. Oh, I almost swore there. This was perfect. I yeah. love this. I love this episode. But it would have been. You know what? I one thing that I've just felt like we never really got from Star Wars, but in the movies. But some I see it all the time in the comics where Palpatine is like he's a bit of an ass to to Vader a lot. Yeah. That's what I've seen from the comics. You oh, know, yeah. know better than me. You know, when he lost to Obi-Wan, I was like, my first thought was, oh man, we're just gonna see him lose it in whatever way it's gonna happen. But we didn't see that. Was I disappointed? Sure. That's like again, great episode. It would have just I'm been cool. Off. Yeah, it would have been cool to see that because I feel like we've never, we haven't explored that at any point in any of the movies or in the shows that I've seen. I don't know if it happens in Rebel, but um, that's something I would have liked to see. It's a mix of he loves taunting and just messing with Vader. Like yes, it, it's a common theme. I think the only time he really lashes when is when he ignores his orders mm-hmm. and like defies him. Um, the like taunting too. I would have liked. I would have liked to see that. Is what I mean. Too. More like a Vader failed again, Lord Vader. Uh, yeah, doing- like dig into the weakness. Listen, I'm being really petty. It's just yeah. something I would have liked to see. All- I like. Just, I, I have a I lot think- of little things I'm petty about. Uh-huh, last yeah. episode. Disney, I think, have focused a lot since they took over of showing a lot of Vader's own sort of side stories. Yeah, I just don't think this was the proper time for it. Fair. If they ever do a Vader series, I can guarantee you he's getting electric shocked a few times. Awesome. It happens, but it, I just don't know if it was the right setting for it. Sure. It was cool seeing Ian McDermott again because the man's great. <laughs> Yeah. Um, also cool, Liam Neeson. Oh my Scott. god! Oh my god! That like talk about a sequence know? of a sequence of events where he goes hello there, and again, I won't. Lie. I, I know it's a meme, <laughs> but I did get like the goosebumps. Then like the same way I got the goosebumps during my god that during that fight scene. I will. I'm assuming we'll talk about that, but I got I had goosebumps the entire time. But like I had goosebumps with the hello there, and then I'm like, it can't get better than this. And you and see then, the figure in your life. Like, oh. Oh. Oh Took God. you long enough. <laughs> yeah, I wish you saw the other Jedi too that were killed during Order sixty six. <laughs> no, he's like, well, you could have killed him. You could have avenged us, dude. What the hell? Plo Koon's like, oh, we'll be one. You busted. And when was like, Let yeah, see now, I told you because of Plo Koon to make it movie accurate, Alex always has to smash his Jedi Starfighter. Exactly. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, Reva, yeah, I think we said it, it was almost like if, if Vader had actually not fully gone, like if Padme wasn't the thing and he didn't have to do that to try and save her and kill the younglings and that, Reva's sort of like a good ending, Anakin. We don't know where her story's gonna go, but it was cool to see that she didn't have to, she didn't go through with it, she didn't kill Luke 
We knew she wasn't going because episode four has to but but <laughs> <Imagine>. like <laughs> she just she just brings the body back to her and he's just dead like the lightsaber I'm like I guess we're done. <laughs> the, the credits go, yeah. Disney takes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine off of uh it's like it's no longer Red Plus. Yeah. All right, yo that bad news. You wanted Leia all along, we got her. Time to trade. Yeah, uh, this game. Before we get to that fight, Vader versus Riva was amazing oh yeah that was cool yeah just breaks the lightsaber what are you gonna do about here i don't even be a forced unleashed like that part oh yeah just and the scene where vader brings that ship down and he pulls it i thought i was watching forced unleashed i was like tell me this is real and it was and even the fight now to the fight with obi-wan when obi-wan lifts up those rocks i thought they did sound and didn't look as heavy as impacting i guess but i was like whoa whoa hope excuse what are we doing here you're not this gonna like this comparison adam what because i know you don't like the rise of skywalker but yes. i think there are just really small parts of it that i did like so it just it didn't remind me of like you know when like he's like you're, you regained your strength yes it's just kind of like for me when ray just hears all the other voices of the other jedi How and then you. obi-wan just I could do he could does he does that with all the rocks. I don't know. That felt like the same part to me. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I I was talking with someone who like got Gus Galloway, I mentioned him before, and he, he does like photography work and that, I'm pretty sure. And he was talking to me is like one thing he didn't like, and others a really good point. I didn't think of this. There's so many close-up shots of her of someone of someone's faces. Like <laughs> even City has had one. And I was like, I didn't think of it until he mentioned it, but I'm like, I think every single character. I, I, Deborah, I love what you did overall, but for the lightsaber fights, can we just zoom out a bit and stop yes. with the TV cam? Like, we're nitpicking. Like, listen, oh, people yeah. have been unnecessarily poor to this, I think. Um, like, but it was good, Deborah. but just, you know. It was very good. We just zoom out and study the camera a bit, you know. You, you got away with it for a bit, Deb. Like Deborah, I love your work, Deborah. It did a great job, Deborah. But just a little better next time, Deborah. You know what's like really like this is the one thing is like I also liked as well that we didn't really get to see before. It's like Aunt Peru actually had a lot of lines, like I know. for her part, right? Um, shout out to her and Uncle Owen. I love when when Owen was like, "He is my own." I was like, oh, "Yes, thank goodness." Oh, and he's I like, think gonna bring up the you know the long rifle that Luke has on the land speeder. I thought he's gonna bring that one out. Maybe I was like, you can do this against an Inquisitor, but all oh, the same people come and you're dead. And what a shame. Where was all that? Where was all that? Um, mention quiet. Yeah, the hello Vader, there was great. Can I ask the question though? Vader is the most intimidating villain. God, he's great. of all time. <laughs> Not just oh, in Star yeah. Wars. In yes. all of all time. Of all time. You know, because I, I listen. Yeah, is that yes, Adam? I, I haven't think of other comments. villains. You haven't think of them. Like, I, listen, I think the uh, like I don't know the obvious one that came up to me in that region was Thanos. Mm-hmm. Oh God, yeah, but but he's not, he's not scary. He's a little. He's scary. Who would you rather Vader see scary. at the end of a hallway, Thanos or Vader? Like, are you more scared if you see that gauntlet, or you hear the the breathing, or oh, the breathing? I think, I think. Okay, this is why I think Vader is the scarier one. I think Thanos would just straight up kill you. I think Vader would taunt with you. I think he would play with you. He bury you under rocks. Yeah. What about Johnny Lawrence of the Cobra Kai? Daniel. Daniel, no, he doesn't Daniel, like no. Daniel. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like, by the way, that that scene with Palpatine and Vader, yeah. how they foreshadowed Luke when he's like, "You not be able to get past, get over your past, Vader." Oh, don't you know, Palps? Don't you know? Um, uh, what else? Um, one yeah, thing. Okay, we, so this is like a, this is a, you know we mentioned nitpicks. This is one yeah. nitpick I did have. So yeah. when the actual Grand Inquisitor comes back and then you see him on the Star Destroyer. I forgot you. Yeah, forgot um, you. It looked like, I don't know, I think it's just the makeup always and the mask on, was it Rupert Friend? Just kind of always looked off to me based on like what I saw him in Rebels. That it just looked like, you know, when you have your created character in a, in a, in a cut scene, <laughs> like he shouldn't be there. <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know, it's funny. So he, I think the, the species is called a Powell. You see them in episode three at Utapau, where 
Obi-Wan goes to fight Grievous. So he doesn't look like that, which is a bit of a nitpick. It, it was a little distracting. Rebels art styles, yeah, you kind of expect him to be kind of slimmer. But then again, like Rebels has a weird art style, right? Like the really thin lightsabers and that. Um, but yeah, no, he was it was kind of a, did he need to be in the story? Like I, I liked think, him, but I think it was kind of like just to show like Darth Vader's like, I know you were up to Rebel this entire time. Yeah. Uh, well, so that was a nitpick people had was like, why did Vader because I've not mentioned this that Vader is very protective of his identity. Like why he never killed Reva, which I think is a very good question. It yeah, didn't yeah. ruin the show for me like it did for other people, but will there be a season two? Because honestly, so. I would be fine if they didn't do it. And I'd so be perfectly would I. fine. If I yeah, think... I'd be fine too. The only one thing is I would hope for in a season two. Yeah. It's just I think it just for me, I like I love episode three. And I I know Adam, you don't like episode two. I like episode two, but I just like to see more flashbacks of like what went on in the Jedi Temple? Really? What, yeah, more like murder? pardon? More murder of the kids? No, because like I think they're just wait during Order sixty six, or do you mean just in general? During Order sixty six, because like not just like the carnage, but like I think there's also that part where I thought about it in Episode three, where like you know a lot of the Jedi that found the path, right? They're the ones that stayed away from the temple. Or the ones that managed to escape when they were still on Coruscant. And the one thing is, I just want to know, like, what their perspective of the react, like, their reaction is to, like, the signal. When, remember, they say, like, all the Jedi to just yeah, to not Obi-Wan, come back. Obi-Wan's yeah. like, stay away. Yeah, stay away after, like, they were, like, the initial beacon was to, like, come back. Mm-hmm. I just want to see, like, there's something like that. There's a reference to that in uh, Fallen Order, by the way. Uh, Cal, that Cal game. has a thing in it. Yeah, it's a great plant. Great game. Um, but no, I think you have a good point there. It's just like we've seen a bit of Order 66. Like they make it more and more iconic with every Star Wars thing. <laughs> Fall in Order, I think, nailed it. Like nailed it. Um, we see a bit of, I think in The Mandalorian, we're going to see more of it. I'm not going to say too much because I don't think you guys have seen it. I've seen a half of episode, a half of season one. Okay, so you guys watch watch the Mandalorian. It's great. Yeah. Uh, even though people don't talk about season one is up and down, um, but they don't mention that. Uh, but it is good. It is y'all watch okay. the Mandalorian. But like, I we're gonna probably see more of it there. Um, like it's it's becoming more and more important the longer like the series is gone. There's some really cool like fan movies and like fan little videos that are out there. Um, but yeah, if if I see it, I just don't know what else you can do. I think they just leave it like I like. I don't want to see him more with Luke. Like, leave it now. Leave him. But then can he leave Tatooine? Is he going to see Ahsoka? I don't know if you're going to make him like him and Cal Kestis meet. Let's keep them. I just, I think you're in a very, I think you have to be sensitive and careful with the first series. I know you and McGregor's open to it. But I'm just, I'm just curious to see if they do do it, where they're going to go with it. Yeah, but, like, uh, I think, like, good. I'm just throwing things out there before we go, but it just, yeah. you know, maybe there's a Bal Organa thing, because, you know, they never mentioned him in episode four. Uh, maybe that's something it's more political with the Empire, or... Uh, Ale, the new Star Bale. Wars original. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Like, Star Wars Celebration next year, we have Riva and Organa, the new original series coming. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I'd see, you know, just... I don't care about Andor, but, I mean, maybe they do critical... Daniel, I would personally not be interested, but I mean, okay. hey, just build up Alderaan even more before it gets destroyed. I still just like that, or I just want to see more former Jedi, or just something to that extent. You know where you can see the Jedi? I know. Clone Wars. Clone Wars, but I want to see it like you can see them. Die you know, too. when they're not at their strength, they're out there, man. They're out there. Just you got to watch enough of the Star Wars content, and they're up there. They're out there, man. Um, you know. Okay, that's it. Um, it's going to be sad waking up on Wednesdays with no Kenobi, but until the Mandalorian next year. That's true. Thank you for listening. Check out all the links in the description below on that long episode, but it was necessary. Um, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.